So. so were were there any big time names? Like a lot of people have come on here talked about Viv Graham, Lee Duffy, people like that. For your era, were there any big time names you were associated with? Associated with is this is what I'm saying. I, I, I thought I was a gangster. I thought I was with loads of criminals, but not not big, no big time gangsters, no big time faces. I bumped into some very big faces, and I've been around and done things with big faces. But I'm not. I'm not a gangster. I'm not a gang member. I'm just some absolute nutcase who wouldn't back down from anybody and was just an absolute psychopath who the gangsters would probably avoid. <laughs> and if anything, if not avoid, thought, oh, great having him on my side because no yeah. one else, you know. So that's all I was. I was nothing special. But at the time, I thought I was. I'd watched too many two-pack films and too many good fella films and I'd run about thinking that running about, being crazy and being a nutcase and having people walk across the street when you... I thought that was a gangster. And it's not. It's called gangsteritis. Yeah, well, that's what I was, and I admit it. But at the time, I would have, if you'd have said it, I'd have been like, I'm the biggest gangster in this jail. Who wants to, oh, then let's go. Anyone wants to fight, let's fight. And I'll beat them, and that's what I was like. But you were healthy as well, though, weren't you? You wasn't getting all drugged up and doing needles and out. No, no, I was uh, very fit. I've got, I, well, you can't see it now, but I've, there's pictures where I was 19 stone, absolutely ripped to death, uh, psychopathic. Um, I bumped into... Um, Actually, is it, I wouldn't say he's a big name as in he's like an international name, but there's someone in Middlesbrough who is a pretty tough lad and he is well known. And he's a, a fighter, super heavyweight world champion as well. He's called Paul Venice. Big lad then. Uh, he, yeah, he's a, if you look at his fights, he's called Paul Venice and he, he's a very, very hard man and a, a very tough tough lad and well known. And he's, he basically um, he says a few things about me. Uh, about me being a bit of a nutter, and, and in one of them, he just says uh, basically that he um, he knows he could beat me. He knows he would have beat me back then in a fight, but at the same time, he knows how much of a nutcase he is, and probably he's has to watch every bush he walks past when he, you know. <laughs> so sometimes I think there's different kinds of a reputation. You see, why well, I'd say there's three. I'd say there's the big boys, and they're in it for the money, and the and it's all about becoming powerful and and like mafia kind of figures and ecstasy kingpings or whatever you know but and then you've got on that under that level you've got two kinds of reputations so you've got people who can fight and not they can fight and they're hard and not many people Strange. can beat them and then you get the psychopathic people who yeah. people just think avoid him don't cross him because he'll turn up at your front door and blow your head well, off the guys who fight as well avoid the psychopathic too yeah and that's what i'm on about you don't i mean like I am gonna have a straight room with anyone, but I don't really want to fancy someone with like ten kitchen fucking knives, you know what I mean? He's and like, I think it's the gameness, because anyone can carry a knife, but not everyone's got the capability to kill. And I, oh, no, I, even no, people no. who kill. Like really, I, I, this might sound crazy, but there's people who carry knives and the, 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 their intention's not to kill anyone. And they get into this mad scruffle and fight, and then they like they end up stabbing them out of fear sometimes. In, didn't intend to kill them. And then they're like, they're, you know, it, it's not in them. Well, nine that times out of sense. ten, it's like if you corner a rat, it'll attack. And that, that's basically, when you've got a knife, nine times out of ten people aren't carrying it to go and actually it hurt someone. They're carrying it so it's they defense, don't get hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then when it kicks off, something happens. But because of that, afterwards, they've just got a big and say, yeah, I'm a murderer. Yeah, I've done this. You know, when they're in jail. But the truth is, it's not in them. Whereas there's people who it is. And, and that was me. Like, I, I, I daydreamed it, I literally daydreamed about killing people on a daily basis. Were you stuck it? Did you have a limit of, like, you thought, I'll just put half the knife in? Or you... <laughs> no, I just I just did it, yeah. I was asked a question, uh, when I was interviewed for the news thing, the man said to me, uh, would, would you have been bothered if you killed them? And my instant reaction at the time was, no. That's what I was going for. That was my intention. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't stab someone in the head. Because you want to, the only thing is, I was a bit clueless at the time, didn't realise that the head probably is the hardest part of the body. You know, if you want to kill someone, well, I better stop cutting that. It must have been a good knife, though, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it wasn't one from Iceland, today, was it? <laughs> it was bent. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one, yeah. <laughs> My favourite ones I used to like was like them Rambo knives. Mm. And they've got a compass on the top. Oh, yeah. And they can unscrew them and you normally have matches and all that in. Oh, fish you I used to have them. I used to have them. I used to like, like walking about with them as well. I used to love them. Commando knives, aren't they? Yeah. Because it's like, it's weird because obviously I must have been mentally ill 
because I would look at knives as it, like they were like a god. I, I, this might sound like I would sit and stare at them and turn them round. And I remember being in a party. I killed the buzz. Everyone's wrecked. Listen to this. <laughs> well, everybody's wrecked. This is funny, this. And there's some handy lads in there as well. They're all wrecked. And I pulled my knife out because it was new. And it yeah. was one of them Rambo ones. And I'm turning it. I'm looking at it. And I forgot where I was. I actually forgot where I was. And I'm turning the knife round. And, and, and then I just got this urge, like, go and kill someone. So I looked up and I went, oh, we let's go and kill someone. And everyone was all on the ends of the city like that, all crumpled up to one side. <laughs> and they were just like staring, no fear. And one of them just slowly come up and he went, oh, you mate, you're killing the buzz and took the knife out of my hand. And then, you know, wow. and this is what I was like. This, I was a bit just mentally ill. Yeah. I wasn't no criminal. I wasn't no gangster. I wasn't anything, just mentally ill. And people just avoided me like the plague. And that's it. Uh, and and that's all I was, you know. Did they pull you up for that? Did they give you like stories in or out? I've been under the mental. I was uh, sectioned off. Mm. I got sectioned off. Uh, it used to be called Saint Luke's at the time in, in Middlesbrough, and I was sectioned in there. I got sectioned in there because the police said they just. I had no fear against the system. I had no. So like I even remember pulling a knife out of the police officer. It's the worst place you can go though, isn't it? Section eighteens. It's like it's fucking hell. It's like one flew over the cuckoo's fucking nest. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I've met some characters.